Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. I'm about to share with you a video I captured last night from the uh, session I did. Uh, my focus last night was trying to get PhD to uh, calibrated so that I could implement auto guiding. Uh, it was really, last night was the fourth night uh, that I was chasing a problem, didn't quite understand it. But ultimately what it came down to is my guide scope was not focused correctly. Um, and just real briefly, I would center, uh, let's say, um, Capella in my uh, main scope and I'd plate solve to put it in the center. I'd see Capella, Capella in my guide scope, but it was like five or six times larger than uh, what it appeared to be in my uh, Xenostar, William Optics Xenostar uh, 61. And um, so that kind of put the idea back in my mind is why is it larger there? And I just kind of ignored it. But when you think about it, this is 380 millimeter focal length and this is 120 uh, millimeter focal length. So the star in my guide scope should be a lot smaller. Finally, it dawned on me like, duh, uh, you know, but this is life as a beginner. Uh, at least uh, my life as a beginner. So what I did is I uh, adjusted uh, the back focus uh, using these uh, nuts here. I loosened it up. I kept my eye on the um, PhD2 display. And as I moved the uh, guide scope backwards, I saw the star in the display get smaller and smaller. And once I thought it was about the right uh, size, then I locked these in place and I did a little fine focus with the forward part of the barrel here. And then I said, okay, I think I got it where I should. And then I went into PhD2 to do a calibration and it was successful. So anyway, um, in the video I said I would add this piece on the uh, back end of the video you're about to see. I decided to put it on the, the front end. And uh, as always, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. I welcome new subscribers and really what has been helping me are people that take the time to leave a comment or ask a question because I learned through that process. And if other beginners are also uh, reading the comments, then I'm sure they're probably uh, learning as well. So let's uh, take a look at the video from last night. Hi, I'm Bill. And if this is the first time that you've dropped into the channel, uh, welcome. So it is the 23rd of January. 2021. It's about uh, 2307. Uh, I had a clear sky tonight, so I went out there with a goal of uh, trying to get auto guiding, auto guiding going. Uh, I did another two other videos tonight. You might want to check out. One was um, using the QHY Pole Master to do a polar alignment. I'll be putting that video together here shortly. And then uh, when I was not making any progress on auto guiding, I just kind of made a video to show the tool set that I use, Astrophotography Tool, PhD2, um, and uh, CART and Do Seal, which is the planetarium program. But this one is specifically going to be brief. Uh, I've been, um, I don't want to say struggling, but, uh, you know, I'm a beginner. Uh, I was trying to get auto guiding going and part of being a beginner is you're not sure what anything is supposed to look like um, so at the end of the day I did not properly have my guide scope um, focused and what I really needed to do was to uh, if you're not familiar with the ZWO 120mm Mini it fits into the back end of my William Optics UniGuide uh, 32mm. And uh, you need to adjust uh, the camera uh, for, I think it's called uh, backspacing. But uh, I'll go into that more in another video. But I just wanted to uh, show you what the PhD2 looks like. Um, once I was able to successfully focus my guide scope, and I'll 
I'll put a little uh, video on to the end of this one to show you uh, what I actually did. So the, you know, so this video will make sense uh, from the beginning uh, to the end. But once I got it focused, it was a pretty easy breezy um, calibration. And um, what you're kind of looking for in the calibration is these green crosshairs. And what we're seeing down here is I have to learn how to read this graph, um, but it is telling me how much error there is in my guiding, uh, I believe. So I'm going to need to start uh, dig into that. And then this value over here, I believe, is telling me something about the guide star that PhD2 automatically uh, selected. So, and then uh, this display up in the upper corner here where my cursor is, I believe that is actually the guide star that is in that green square, and it that is what it's uh, using to track. Over here on the target display, I'm not really sure yet what that's showing me, uh, but again, this is part of the learning process is to, at least in my mind, gain, gain some level of functionality and then dig into all the information that's being presented to me so I understand it and therefore if there's any problems in the future uh, I can uh, I can do the troubleshooting but I've been chasing this for about three nights and then I finally figured well if I'm not getting the focus out of the focus um, control on the end of my guide scope then I need to reposition my um, mini cam in the guide uh, scope too so that was uh, I did it and uh, and that was pretty cool and the other thing I noticed that I was um, reading some articles in an effort to try and solve the solution and people were saying that their signal to noise ratio which I'll I'll go into more in another video but we can see it displayed down here it's about 37.4 um, some people were saying at dark sites they're getting as much as 60 I couldn't get anything over like 5.6 and again it was all about not having the proper focus on my guide scope. So um, I'm needless to say pretty excited. Uh, this opens the door for me to uh, learn about and start to use dithering when I'm taking my images and when you're using dithering it will aid you in the long run uh, by uh, being able to subtract out, as I understand, some additional noise that's present uh, uh, within your images. Uh, so I'll find out more about that and I'll share that. But, uh, wow, well, there was a point where I was not sure if I was ever going to get it working. But then again, I said, you just got to chase it. And that's just kind of life as a beginner. And I searched and I searched. Um, cloudy nights and elsewhere and there wasn't a lot of specific or prescriptive information available that I could find on how to get around this uh, challenge so I figured it, it it still had to be you know probably related to focus so uh, I'm glad I uh, stuck with it anyway I just wanted to give a brief uh, update that I was able to get auto guiding going with uh, PhD2. Um, I'll add what I actually did. Uh, I'll take some video of me by my scope and showing what adjustment I made. So if others have the same guide scope and camera that I do, it'll uh, maybe help uh, put you on track if you're having any issues on how you might be able to resolve yours. But uh, you know, and it's always fun when you get around a challenge, right? When you figure it out. So, uh, and now it just opens the door to learning even more stuff and trying to figure out a lot more information. So, you know, uh, but that is the way it is going up the learning curve. So again, if you like this kind of content, uh, please give it a thumbs up. As always, I welcome new uh, subscribers. It's questions and comments that really help drive the channel. So don't hesitate if you can uh, help me, please uh, take time to comment. If there's something I can help you with, please ask a question because there are other people that look at these videos in the comments and they may be more experienced than me and might be able to help you. Uh, 
but anyway, uh, I'm glad I stuck with it tonight because uh, I really wanted to get, uh, I wanted to meet this challenge and uh, put it behind me and now it opens the doors uh, for some additional functionality which will enable me to make improvements in the end result of my uh, deep sky object uh, images. So um, that's about it. I thank you for dropping into the channel. Until next time. Thank you.